the asteroid belt. Hollywood would have you believe that this stretch of space between Mars and Jupiter is a minefield of rocky bodies, an almost impenetrable zone for any spacecraft. That picture couldn't be further from the truth. While this massive donut-shaped ring is home to millions of asteroids, ranging in size from pebbles to protoplanets, they're separated by an average distance of 600,000 miles. But out here, a lone dwarf planet looms large, Ceres, a body 590 miles across, roughly the width of Texas, is changing our understanding of the asteroid belt. As new evidence suggests, it may hold the key to deciphering the early life of our solar system. This body has appeared just as a, a faint smudge of light amidst the stars for more than two centuries. And now we're turning it into a richly detailed, fascinating portrait of a complex, fascinating alien world. NASA launched its Dawn mission to explore the asteroid belt objects Vesta and Ceres in 2007. Nearly a decade later, Dawn is not only furthering our understanding of how icy and rocky planets are formed, but may also have delivered potential clues as to the origins of life itself. The Dawn mission is to explore these two protoplanets. They started forming as planets and stopped billions of years ago, so it's kind of a snapshot of when the solar system formed. While Ceres was expected to be a cold, hard rock besieged with craters, scientists have now been left scratching their heads. In February of 2017, they discovered something that could change everything they thought they knew of the asteroid belt. Organic molecules. My colleague found a spectral signature in her data that is consistent with, or the same signature of, of aliphatic hydrocarbons. Now that's a big long phrase, but what it means, it's chains of carbon and hydrogen atoms together that are found in organic compounds, in a number of different organic compounds. Methane um, and ethane are two aliphatic hydrocarbons. They're products of organic processes. So here we're finding maybe the building blocks of, of biological material. Seen here in red, the organic materials were found in an area covering roughly 400 square miles of what is known as the Erniotet Crater and are thought to have originated in the dwarf planet itself. Had they been brought during an asteroid's impact on Ceres' surface, the distribution would have been widespread instead of in the highly concentrated pockets observed by dawn. And while the actual composition of the molecules has yet to be confirmed, the spacecraft's instruments point to either kerite or asphaltite, tar-like minerals found here on Earth. And it's not found in very many places throughout the solar system. We only see these signatures on two other asteroids and on three of the moons of, of Saturn. It, this is only the seventh place in the solar system where we see these compounds that are, are related to organic material. It doesn't mean that we found life there, but, but if there is life there, it's, it's the first clue. For life to form, an energy source would also have to be present. And Dawn may have found that evidence nearly 600 miles away at what has been dubbed the Akator Crater. When Dawn arrived at Ceres, we noticed this very bright patch of reflected light off of the surface. And as we got closer and closer, the bright patch turned into a couple of patches. We got lower, closer to the body, got higher resolution image data, and finally were able to confirm that reflected light is coming from the mineral left behind from water melting or ice melting into vapor. The Akator Crater is a 57-mile-wide zone with the highest concentration of carbonate minerals found outside of Earth. While not considered to be organic compounds, the discovery of these salt flats is just as important. Surprisingly, the bright area is estimated to be 30 million years younger than the crater itself and appears to have originated from Ceres, 
pointing to geological activity. Evidence possibly supporting this theory can be found a short distance away at a two and a half mile high dome-shaped mountain known as a Huna Mons. Scientists now believe that the feature could perhaps be a cryovolcano responsible for the release of sodium carbonates and salts. We hadn't seen anything like it before in the solar system. It was very tall and had steep slopes. So if Sahuna Mons is a cryovolcano, which we have demonstrated that it is, that tells us that there has to be something beneath the surface of Ceres that heated the material to the melting point and made it push through the cracks on the surface. Um, we're not sure what that material is. The temperatures are so cold that the same type of, of magma on Earth and Mars just doesn't, can't exist on Ceres. So the material that's flowing on Ceres had to be composed of mostly very salty water that would flow at the low temperatures. And when pushed out onto the surface, they would freeze and form this steep-sided dome called a Huna Mons. But what surprises us is that this happened so recently. We expected Ceres to be a cold rock, um, but sure enough, here's the evidence that it is not. It's an active protoplanet, and it's recently active. And that's really surprising. The universal constant in the search for life is always water. So uh, now we're looking at bodies like Ceres as places where um, there may have been life in the past because they have the essential ingredients. They had liquid water or do at the present. Um, they had essential chemical ingredients and they had energy sources. Able to orbit at an altitude of only 240 miles above the rocky terrain, closer to Ceres than the International Space Station is to Earth. Dawn's impressive array of instruments are a testament to NASA's continued development of cutting edge technologies. So the Dawn mission has a camera which takes visible light images of the surface which helps us understand what the body looks like. It helps us map out the topography over the surface. Another instrument is the visible in infrared spectrometer that provides the high resolution spectrum of the surface using the reflected light and that helps us understand the mineral makeup of the surface. The last instrument on the spacecraft is the grand instrument, a gamma ray and neutron detector, which helps us understand the mineral makeup all the way down to about a meter below the surface uh, because it looks at neutrons that come off of the surface when a, a cosmic ray or something like that hits an, uh, an atom on the surface. It bounces a neutron up and the grand instrument can detect those and understand the mineral makeup. Now that we've completed those objectives, we're going to raise the orbit from our, our lowest altitude where we are now to allow us to conserve fuel to stay longer at Ceres. Right now our plans take us through uh, about June, August of 2017 where we'll be at a higher orbit continuing to observe Ceres and, and looking to improve our data set. Ceres has gone above and beyond the expectations of NASA scientists. And with a few months of scientific exploration left to go, all the evidence suggests they only just scratched the surface.